right guys, so these are just the materials you're gonna need for this little build. You don't need everything here, but we're gonna try and make it better than just the most basic. All the things I bought today, I bought from Lowe's and the total was $35. Now keep in mind, I live in Hawaii, so everything construction material related is more expensive. Here we have some hinges, came with two, I only need one. This is just a little bracket we're gonna use for extra support. We have a four and a half inch, quarter inch carriage bolt. Then with one of these female ends, this is basically being, gonna be our knob to tighten. Every Lowe's should have one of these, but not necessarily. Yeah, you find them in the hardware section, in the drawers. And then also just a spring. This one is just under four inches. We're gonna have about two and a half inches in between the jaws of the, of the stitching pony, so this should just open it up just enough to make it nice and easy. Again, this is unnecessary. One note on the spring, I believe they call this a compression spring, meaning when you push it, that's what provides the resistance. The opposite would be all of the wires would be really close together and it'd have hooks on the end and then it'd pro provide tension in the other way. You'd pull it apart. So this is a compression spring. This is what you'll want. Um, again, these are just in the hardware section. A cheap little addition to make it a little bit more convenient. So you can just do one hand to loosen it and open up the jaws. Then we just have some basic metal screws um, to attach the bracket. And then we have this clamp. This is the smallest one they make. They're five bucks. It's gonna be perfect to put your stitching pony to a workbench. Again, this you don't need. You can always just screw the stitching pony to, to a place where you're gonna use it all the time. But I prefer to have the ability to move it because sometimes I like to stand while stitching. Sometimes I like to sit. So all of this, including the wood, this is a six foot board. It's a one by four, just basic white board. A six foot piece of this was $6 for me. They're much cheaper in the rest of the country. Um, you could use any kind of wood, really. Could have used oak or hemlock or really anything. This is just the cheapest way to go. I almost guarantee most of you will be able to do this project for less than 20 bucks. You can always use scrap wood. You might have some screws laying around. You might already have some clamps. So in reality, this could be a super cheap project. Oh, one thing I forgot is just some basic wood glue. Wood glue properly clamped and cured will be stronger than screws. As far as tools go, you'll essentially just need a drill and a saw. You don't have to have uh, a miter saw or a jigsaw, although ideally you'd have a miter saw. Um, I'm just using a circular saw, but you can do this by hand without any issue. Just gonna take a little extra time. Okay guys, let's just jump into it. We're just measuring 15 inch lengths. Give me square on one side and mitered on the other. It's easy to use one as a template for the other. And then right after that, we're going to make the inside of the jaws. These are about three inches. They're a little bit big, so you can actually do two or one and a half. But again, just make one and then use it as a template to make the other. Right here, I'm just essentially mocking it up, making sure it makes sense. You can see the inside of the jaws there. Again, a little bit big, definitely goes smaller. Then I just like to kind of round the inside of the jaws. Totally unnecessary, I just think it looks a little bit better. Again, just mocking it up here, making sure that it makes sense. Right here, you just see me marking the glue line and then adding a copious amount of glue. I am definitely not a woodworker, it's apparent here. This made a big old mess, but it works just the same. Just had to clean it up a little bit more. You're gonna wanna clamp it for at least 30 minutes before you work with it at all, but ideally, you'd let it cure overnight. After that, I start making the leather protection. This is better to do now rather than when it's fully built. So you're just kinda measuring out roughly I ended up with 10 inches for each piece. It doesn't really matter because the leather can stretch down the side of the stitching pony quite a ways and it won't affect anything as long as it doesn't get in the way of the knob that you use to tighten the stitching pony. So this is a stitching pony I currently use. It's by Wingwave Designs. I'll link them in the description. Just wanted to talk about a couple of the features. So it does have the spring. So as you loosen it, the jaws open. 
I put the leather on. That's what I was doing just now was cutting leather strips to put on ours. And then you might be wondering why this is curved. So a couple of reasons. One, you can just get more in there, like bigger bags to then do like top seams or gussets or whatever. But then also, I believe having the angle provides a little bit more tension up at the top. I could be wrong about that. Lastly, these knobs tend to catch thread unless you have something that kind of guides the thread over it, all your loose thread when you're when you're stitching. This is kind of what we're going for, but without the curve. And then we're doing it the same height, about 15 inches. So here's another completely unnecessary step. I'm just essentially giving the top some shape. You can keep it pointed. It doesn't matter at all. It's not gonna affect how you use it. I just think it looks a little bit more finished with that nice curve. Now where you put the bolt is kind of up to you. Just realize that the further down you go, the less pressure you're gonna have in between your jaws. But if you go too high, then you'll be limited in what you can put inside of it. So I always tend to put it about right in the middle. Up next, we're basically just using contact cement to secure the leather to the wood. The reason why we put leather in between the jaws is because the wood will actually mark up your projects. And keeping that in mind, you also want to make sure you use a veg tan leather without any oils in it because they will transfer to your project. A lot of chrome tan leathers have oils in them and they can end up ruining what you're working on. I've made a few of these in the past and I've had issues with the ends of the leather just kind of coming peeled up over time. So I have these cool brass nails that I use for shoemaking and I just tacked in three on both sides just to make sure that it'd be really secure. One step I forgot to film was just making the base. It's essentially another 15 inch piece of wood that just needs to be flat. I rounded the edges because I think it looks good. After I had all the pieces made, I mocked them up without any glue and made some marks. So when I'm setting up these posts right now, I already know where the marks are. And you can figure out the proper spacing simply by using two off cuts and putting them in between your jaws because that's the exact spacing you're going to need in between the two posts. So I went with just the bracket at first, but it ended up feeling a little bit flimsy. So I actually ended up putting some wood screws through the base into that post you see there. Just make sure that you pre-drill the holes with a small bit or else you're going to crack that post. What you don't see here is that I've clamped the top of the jaws to hold everything together. That's why there's that little bit of tension. And now I'm gonna use those off cuts like I talked about to get the proper spacing and then secure the other side of the hinge. So when I originally drilled the holes for the carriage bolt, I used a quarter inch bit because it's a quarter inch bolt but then I realized that because of the angle of the hinged post, that it was getting too much friction. So I went back with a 5 16th bit and made that hole just a little bit bigger so there's less friction and the spring can do its job and actually open up the jaws. Okay, so if I were to do this again, I would probably make this contact point, this surface here on both sides, 
shorter, maybe about an inch and a half. Um, just because it would free up more space right here, you don't need three inches of contact. If you look at my wing wave design, by wing wave I mean this is a, a company. There's like about a half an inch, three quarter of an inch of contact right there. So I think that's just a better design. It's not that this doesn't work, I just think that having less contact there is actually going to be better. All right guys, that just about does it. We have an awesome stitching pony. It was super cheap and it took about two hours to make. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, this video is sponsored by Open Sea Leather. We're having a huge Black Friday sale as always. It'll start Thanksgiving night and everything will be between 20 and 40% off. Thanks so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button and I'll see you soon.